All right, time to show you how to use Excel to create a maximum profit fit formulation software for yourself. I do believe that people do not care how much you know unless they know how much you care. And that's why I'm making these videos just to help younger generation to solidify the concept of animal nutrition in their mind. And I can't describe how I feel, how much joy does it have. Whenever, you know, I've been teaching for more than 10 years in animal science field, and whenever I see my uh, former students and their success, so it's a lot of pleasure and joy for me. And that's why I want to spread the word of animal nutrition and animal science and help the people either in academia or industry to use uh, the new techniques. And, uh, and I hope I can have you know, a long lasting effect in this field. Okay, let's get it started. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use nonlinear models to formulate the diets based on maximum profit feed formulation. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Before Starting the Excel sheet, I would like to invite you to watch my previous videos about uh, mathematical models in poultry nutrition and also least cost feed formulation. Because in this video, I'm gonna summarize uh, the steps that are common in maximum profit feed formulation and least cost feed formulation. That's why I go just quickly uh, for those stuff that they are in common and I will pay more attention to the part that is specific to the maximum profit feed formulation. But just as an overview, I would like to introduce some models and the concept of maximum profit feed formulation. So, as you, you can see in my previous videos, I described the concept and the basis of uh, nonlinear models that we are using in maximum profit fit formulation. The idea is we want to plot the performance. For example, in broiler case, it is body weight. And in layer case, it is egg mass against dietary energy level. And at the end of the day, we will have a, you know, regression equation, something like this. This is from an article. Uh, it was published in 2004 by Dr. Guara in Poultry Science. But, and I will use this equation in my example today. But you can use any models published in any scientific journal. In fact, the objective of publishing those models, nutritional models, is to use them in feed formulation and in nutritional management. Otherwise, why would people bother themselves to uh, create the models and publish them? So we need to uh, bring them to the practical situation, and it's my goal. So, as you can see, 
uh, if we plot body weight of broilers against the dietary energy, we can have an equation like this. So the idea is in this experiment, uh, they fed diets with different energy level, and then they measured the performance. In addition, they measured the feed intake and they obtained a regression equation for feed intake as well. So how are we gonna use these models in maximum profit feed formulation? So as you can see, the formula for margin is, or profit is revenue minus cost. In fact, I'm going to just maximize it, okay. In fact, we are going to look at revenue and cost. What is the revenue? Revenue comes from product price times product amount. What is cost? Cost is feed cost. We are talking in nutrition. So feed cost times by feed intake. And here we want to actually replace the product amount and feed intake with the relevant uh, regression equations that we got from this paper. So if you pay attention to this part, instead of product amount, I have put the regression equation for broiler body weight. And instead of feed intake, I have put the regression equation of feed intake. So the unknown uh, component here is E, which is dietary energy. Because determining the dietary, dietary energy is the first step in feed formulation, that's why we are going to uh, determine the optimum level of energy based on product price, for example, chicken price, and feed cost. So in fact, the software is gonna take derivative of this equation, this whole equation, and put it equal zero. By doing that, it can find the unknown component here, which means energy in such a way to maximize the uh, left hand side of the model. Here, LHS or left hand side of the model is margin or profit. Okay, and we will use uh, this nonlinear programming model in our Excel sheet and I will uh, explain in detail how we are going to use that. If you are going to use um, maximum profit fit formulation for layers, you can use egg mass equation instead of uh, broiler body weight feed for uh, broiler body weight uh, regression. And also in that case, you need to use the equation for feed consumption in layers. So let's fire up the Excel sheet and get started. As you can see here, I have put together the list of feed ingredients that feed ingredients that I'm going to use in this example. Uh, they are exactly the same as the uh, example that I used in uh, my previous video on least cost feed formulation. So 
If you want to see the details, just feel free to watch the previous video and you will see how I created these, uh, ta this table in Excel. So in this part, actually, I'm using these rows to uh, determine the minimum and maximum amount of each feed ingredient that I'm going to use in my final diet. I can change them. For example, minimum amount 0% for corn. I'm going just to uh, maximize it so you can see clearly. And 100%, for example, as maximum amount. Anytime I can change these values based on what I'm getting from my final uh, formula. And I do have inclusion rate or inclusion percentage here in this row. So I'm not going to import any value here because at the end of the day, I am asking the software to determine these values for me. In my previous video, these values were determined based on least cost fit formulation, but in this video, they will be determined based on maximum profit fit formulation. So I'm just gonna drag down my video here, my picture, and start from the next set. Okay. In this cell, I'm going to introduce the models to my Excel. So I'm going to write nutrient, nutrient pair energy ratio that I will use in my model, in my uh, nonlinear models. And then I will have RHS or right hand side of the models in this column. So I'm gonna show you quickly what I mean. See, this is the model that I'm going to, I'm trying to explain over there in Excel for you. For example, uh, for the cost, here activity actually X1, X2, X3, they are the amount of uh, feed ingredient in my uh, model. And C1, C2, and C3 are the cost of each ingredient uh, in the feed formulation spreadsheet. So this table means I'm going to get some product, some product. It means that I'm going to multiply C1 by X1, C2 by X2, C3 by X3, and zero by X4. This column is for energy that I will explain in Excel later on. It should be equal to cost, dietary cost or C. So C is the right hand side or RHS of my model for the cost. For example, let's say X1 is corn, X2 is wheat, X3 is soybean meal. So I am multiplying their uh, price, their prices by their amount in the formula. And then I am going to add them up to have my final dietary cost. So it is exactly same 
for weight. It means that I'm going to have uh, the weight of diet equals to one. It means that my diet should be balanced at 100% or one. Now take a look at um, energy. As you can see, for each ingredient, I have its energy. For example, let's say E1 is energy of corn. E2 is energy of wheat. E3 is energy of soybean meal. And here I have minus one. So I'm going to say E1 times X1 plus E2 times X2 plus E3 times X3 plus minus one times dietary energy, it should be equals to zero. And actually, this dietary energy here that I will show you how to implement this stuff in Excel, that energy cell will be optimized based on product cost or the ingredients cost. For the next one, I have protein level. So I'm going to uh, multiply the protein level of each ingredient by the amount of that ingredient, and then add them up, and then minus um, protein level by energy level, it should be greater uh, or equal to zero. I will have the same thing for amino acids and for minerals. And in fact, uh, the dietary energy would be equal to E, E means dietary energy, and it can be fluctuate between E1 and E2, minimum amount of dietary energy and maximum amount of dietary energy. And it's totally up to you, but it should be in their biological range. For example, let's say for broilers, broiler chickens, we would consider a dietary energy between 2,700 kilocalorie per kilogram to 3,100 or 3,200 kilocalorie per kilogram. For the layers, it would be a little bit less. Uh, it would be around 2,600 to up to 3,000 or 2,950 kilocalorie per kilogram. And I will define my objective function. I showed you my, uh, my objective function. It was uh, actually the uh, revenue times the uh, amount of broiler meat or egg mass in case of layers minus cost. This C is feed cost, right? And I need to multiply it by the equation of feed intake that I have extracted from the uh, articles. So the margin will be revenue minus cost that you can see here. And our objective is to maximize it. Now, let's go to the Excel sheet and see how we can do this. So I've got nutrient per metabolizable energy column. I got RHS and I need to define a minimum and maximum amount for my uh, RHS. So in fact, uh, as you can see here, I do have uh, energy level 
uh, here in the amount in the inclusion percent of seed stuff. So it would be the dietary energy that I'm going to import it over here. This row, this green row, is the inclusion rate of feed stuff in my final uh, diet. So I'm gonna put it as 3.1, but it's not percentage anymore. So I can just define it as 3.1. So I'm gonna write it down. This is ME based on megacalorie per kilogram. And I'm gonna change the, I'm gonna highlight it in yellow. So I will see how I can change it. And um, in fact, I'm going to just, okay bring those stuff to here. Okay, but maybe I would use other color like this one, yeah. Okay, so nutrient per ME that I will calculate them later on in the next columns and RHS and um, I, would, I will have RHS and minimum and maximum amount for the RHS. So before importing formula for RHS, I'm not gonna confuse you. That's why I'm going to first calculate nutrients per energy column and then come back and put the formulas for RHS. So the next step, so here in fact is range for RHS or right hand side of the formula. Okay, now I'm going to put nutrient constraints over here and I'm going to add okay in nutrient constraints in fact let's freeze is column first um, it should be frozen from here. So I'm going to freeze the first column to see the component in later sets when I'm working here. So here I need to import the nutrient constraints or nutrient recommendations. What is the nutrient recommendation, let's say for Ross 308 broiler chickens during the grower phase? So you can just search for that. And uh, in the manual guide of Ross 308 um, nutrient specification, you can find is a requirement in table one. So we can see the energy, the recommended energy level is 3,100 kilocalorie per kilogram. I'm gonna import it as megacalorie. 3.1 megacalorie per kilogram. So here again, I'm going to change my unit to megacalorie. 
So how much protein do I need? 21.5. I'm going to write it down here based on percentage, right? So how much calcium do I need? Calcium 0.87. How much available phosphor do I need? 0.435. For the sodium and chloride level, they are always between 0.16 to 0.23% of the diet. So I'm going to pick 0.17 for both of them. You can decide yourself. As a nutritionist, you need to consider the uh, salinity of the drinking water and other considerations in your farm, and then decide how much sodium or how much chlor chloride your diet should have. Okay, for the lysine part, how much lysine? Total amount of lysine is 1.29. So I'm going to import it 1.29. For methionine, it is a uh, point 51, I'm going to import it as 0 0.51, and for the methionine plus cysteine, it is 0 0.99, and for treonine, it is 0.88, and for tryptophan, the last amino acid that I'm going to import is 0.21. And I think I, I just need um, two decimal points would be enough. So I'm going to format cells and I'm going to change the decimal place places to two decimal places. There we go. So now I have extracted nutrient constraints from the uh, nutrient requirement tables. The next step is to define the ratio between nutrients per energy. Okay. So as you can see, it puts Me2 because I already have a similar column here. So let's see to just to, you know, make it clear. I'm going to put not per Me. Okay, not here means nutrients. Um, now I'm going to calculate the ratio of nutrient per energy. So I'm going to put equals energy divided by energy divided by itself. So I, I can see it automatically dragged down and up for other cells. So I can just delete them. And the idea is the protein one will be protein divided by energy. But I am going to put, I'm going to press F4 to put dollar sign around the X7, X6, X6, uh, it means that energy cell, and fix it. Because in later steps, I'm going to drag it down, and that's why I need to keep 
the uh, actually energy value as 3.1 uh, constantly constant in other cells. Okay, but the idea is if you look at the uh, energy column here in my model, all of them are minus, but we didn't put them as minus. So um, we can easily change them, but instead of that, I can just, because I will use these stuff, it is just for calculation and I calculate them over there and I'm gonna use them in my model. My model is here in this column, in column T. So I can edit it here. So the ME1 will be equals to this cell, energy per energy, but with minus sign. So there we go. Now we do not need this stuff from here, and I, I will have all other uh, values over here. Okay. And for the RHS part, as I described here, um, our HS is some product of each row with the inclusion rate row. So it means that this one will be some product. I'm just going to type some product, some product of B22 up to T22, it means that the inclusion rate of my FD stops and the column of nutrient per energy, comma, it will be some product of this by energy level because I am calculating it for energy. Okay. If I want to drag it down for other cells, for other rows, it would be easier just to fix the inclusion rate row by pressing F4 for B22 to T22. Okay. Now you can see it automatically dragged down and up. I don't need it for here, and I do not need it for this row, but I do need for other rows. And if we pay specific attention, we had one here. This one is for energy, right? We want to say one times the energy, required energy, the energy that we are going to optimize it, equals energy. So for the sake of modeling, I will put it as one. Now look at this cell, it changed to 3.1. It means that I multiplied all the values in inclusion rate row by 
all the values on row 17 and it is some product is 3.1. In fact, in row 17, there is only one value and it is this one that I have put here. And other cells in this row are blank. It means they are zero. So when we are multiplying zero by any number, it will be zero. You know, these are the tricks that you need to be familiar with and you need to solidify these concepts and tricks in your mind to be able to use the Excel or other software more uh, precisely and efficiently. All right, now we are getting close to maximum profit with formulation technique. Okay, what's the minimum and the maximum? As we saw here, so the RHS for energy should be zero and for others should be zero as well. Uh, and we will put actually constraint in the solver function in solver section for these cells later on. So minimum should be zero, right? Except for energy because for energy, I need to specify a range. As I'm writing, I'm formulating this diet for broiler chickens, based on my own experience, I'm putting the 2.75 as minimum dietary energy level up to 3.1 megacalorie per Kilogram. Okay. Now I need to have another column over here and name it as nutrient specifications. Just nutrient spec means nutrient specification. And I can change the color if I want to this fonts. Okay. So, and I forgot to put one for weight because as you saw here, the weight of the diet should be equal to one because we want to formulate our diet in 100%. Okay, what will be my dietary energy at the end of the day? Equals, again, some product, of the inclusion rate, see here, when I'm going to calculate nutrient specifications of my diet, I need to include only the inclusion rates of PD stuff, not the T20 second cell. Because in this column, in column T, in my model, I included this cell as well, the T column as well. But now my goal is different. Now I'm going just to calculate how much energy, how much protein, I don't know, amino acids, minerals my diet will have. So I need to just specify the inclusion rate of my uh, stuff. I'm putting comma, and now 
I was calculating the energy, right? Dietary energy. So I'm going to specify the energy column as well. And okay, see, it automatically dragged down and up. But is it correct? What do you think? I think you can just pause the video and think about my previous uh, teaching over here about the dragging down or up the cell. And let me know what you think. Then we can continue. Okay. I hope you found it. See, <clears throat> for the protein level, for the calcium level, available phosphor, sodium, everything, I need to multiply the nutrient by inclusion rate. That's why if I'm going to drag it down, drag this cell down, I need to fix the inclusion rate row here and here. I just pressed F4 to uh, fix those uh, cells. See, now they are fixed. I don't need this one. It is the dietary cost, as you can see here. This is the dietary weight. And this one is for empty row. I'm just gonna delete it, I don't need it. Okay, now I'm going to calculate profit. The main objective that we have been looking for. There we go. So for profit, I will use, I can use this cell over here or whatever I want. Maybe I can use this cell, you know, because if I use this cell, maybe you will be, some people <laughs> will be confused if it is for cost, but no, it is not for cost. I'm just calculating profit. But how I should calculate the profit? Remember this formula, margin equals Revenue minus cost. The revenue is over here. I need to use the um, equation for broiler body weight extracted from Dr. Guevara paper, or as I said, you can extract it from other papers as well. And for the feed intake, I need to use this um, equation for feed intake. So to do that, in fact, I need to have a feed cost. I already calculated here. And I need to have a cell indicating the broiler price chicken price. So I'm going to specify production attributes in this set. And as I said, just to um, make it better, I can always change the uh, color and font color. Okay, now I am going to write broiler body weight um, equation in this cell. I need to have the intake equation in this cell. 
if I have those criteria, I can easily calculate feed conversion ratio or FC. And I need to have a sale for broiler price based on dollar. So let's say I'm putting the broiler price, live price. I think in Canada nowadays is around 1.6, 1.7 dollar, Canadian dollar. You can use your currency wherever you are and up to date price for this purpose. Okay, now the life is going to get easier because we are almost ready. So for broiler body weight, I'm going to minimize it and minimize my power point. So what was the broiler body weight equation? As I said, from this paper, I do have this formula. Now look carefully what I'm going to do, how I'm going to implement it in my Excel sheet. Equals, Y equals, Y is body weight, equals minus 2.2571 times x to the power of 2. What is x? x here is dietary energy, right? So where is my dietary energy here? As you can see, I have specified my dietary energy over here, right? It should be used in my calculation. So T22 to the power of two. See, I'm writing the formula over here. And plus 14.69 times X, again, dietary energy, minus 21.696. So finish, just press enter. And you can see the prediction for broiler body weight has already been calculated here. So for feed intake, I can use this formula over here from this uh, article. So it's the same idea. Equals 0 0.9925 times X, X is the energy level that I'm going to use time, uh, sorry, to the power of two minus, see, I'm following these, this equation, minus 6.9425, times energy level plus 15.581. I have calculated the feed intake as well. So let's maximize this one, okay? What would be FCR? As you know, FCR would be feed intake divided by body weight, right? Okay, now, in profit cell, 
I will have the same idea. Let's just, okay, come back here. So in profit cell, I am going to um, in fact write this margin formula margin or profit equals to production pr product price it means that broiler price times the equation of body weight minus feed cost times the equation for feed intake right so profit I'm going to say equals, I'm going to start a parenthesis and say broiler price, it means that this cell, right, times body weight. Instead of body weight, I do have this equation. So times minus 2.5. 2571 times dietary energy, right? Where is my dietary energy? Over here. To the power of 2 plus 14.69 times energy, right? Minus 21.696. See, I am repeating the broiler body weight equation here in my profit set. But now here it is inside a bigger uh, equation, margin equation. So I'm going to close the parentheses. And in fact, I have opened up two parentheses, so I'm going to close them up. And minus, so profit is revenue minus cost. Minus cost. Where is feed cost? Feed cost is here, right? It is the feed cost that we calculated. If you see, um, it was feed cost. If I maximize the Excel, you will see that. Anyway, so I'm gonna put parentheses just in case. And times, times what? Feed intake. What is the equation for Big intake, this one. So I'm gonna type it here, 0 0.9925 times ener energy level, this cell to the power of two minus 6.9489 times dietary energy again plus 15.581, right? I had the two parentheses. So now I can see the profit here, but it's just based on the values that I had over there. We have not solved the diet yet. So in fact, because it automatically drags down and up. I'm going to delete the extra sets. Okay, now I can see my profit over here. Now we can just set up the solver windows. I have explained how to uh, activate the solver function in Excel in my previous videos. I will try to put a link of those videos somewhere 
here in this video. Just in case, if you want to review them, you, you can just click on those links and be uh, directed to the video. So I'm going to open up the solver. See, I clicked on data and then I clicked on solver. Now, what is my objective set? Is it cost? No, because I don't want to formulate the diet based on least cost fit formulation. My objective cell here is this cell, profit, AA5. So I'm going to maximize it. So it should be maximized. And in fact, I am going to do this by changing which variable variable cells by changing the inclusion rate of my fit stuff and what dietary energy i want excel to manipulate the inclusion rate of fit stuffs or ingredients, as well as the dietary energy level here to find the best approach to formulate the diet. So I specified those things. Now I can use a constraint window to put my constraints. So I, I'm going to add constraints. Um, constraints for my inclusion rate of TV stops would be, I mean, B22 up to S22 should be less than or equal to um, maximum row. But because I do have vitamin premix and mineral premix over here in R and S columns, and I want them to be used in my diet exactly as 0.25% or in other word, two and a half kilogram per ton of feed. So I'm going to put their constraint uh, exactly equals to um, 0 0.25. That's why here I'm going to change the inclusion rate only for other feed stuff. See, I left vitamin premix and the mineral premix to put them equal to 0.25%. So this one, these feed stuffs from B22 to Q22 should be less than their maximum amount. It means that this row, right? Okay, row 20. I'm going to add it, and again, they should be greater than, I'm going to change it to greater than, greater than what? Greater than minimum amount, right? And finished. Now I can easily put constraint for vitamin, Premix, it should be equal to this cell, add, and the mineral premix should be equal to this cell, right? Add. Okay, I have finished all the constraints required for feed ingredients. Now I need to put constraints for my model. So 
In fact, the uh, weight, dietary weight, C, row four, column U. Dietary weight should be equal to what? One. I can put this value over here from cell V4, or I can just type one. It doesn't matter. Both ways you can do that. And then I'm going to add other RHS, it means these stuffs, from U6 until U17. They should be greater or equal to the minimum amount, right? And also, I'm going to specify another constraint for my energy constraint, and it should be less than or equal to the maximum amount of um, energy. Okay. Yeah, I think I've got all the required stuff. Now, in the, you need to check this on, make unconstrained variables, non-negative, and select a solving method. It should be non-linear. See, in previous, section, in previous video, I used LP method or linear programming method, but this is non-linear programming method. Then you need to press options to have a look over here. So I'm gonna check these on. Ignore the integer constraint. And I'm going to just increase the integer optimality to 5%. So I'm going to, for solving the limits, I'm going to give 100 seconds for maximum time. And for iterations, I'm going to put 1,000 times or 10,000 times. You know what iterations mean? Iterations is the number of repetition of feed formulation. It means that I am telling the software, repeat the feed formulation for 10,000 times and choose the best one. So, because you know, sometimes you are hearing for some feed formulation software, that they are saying this software can repeat or can create, I don't know, 100, 500 uh, different formulas, feed formulas, and then it can choose the best one. It is done from here, from iterations uh, option. For GRG nonlinear, it's, I'm going to put it derivatives as forward because as I said, it's gonna take derivative of my margin formula, put it equal as zero, and then over here, maximize the profit. So, And I'm going to check this. Okay. Now I'm going to put my CD stops equals to zero just to test, just to test my software to see how it can 
solved the formula for me. So I just minimized a little bit to see the big picture of my Excel sheet. So I'm going to choose solver and I'm going to solve it. And it shows that the solver found a solution and all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. I can press one, right? So as I can see the dietary energy level, if you remember, I, I have put it as 3.1 megacalorie per kilogram. Now it says, if you want to maximize profit based on these uh, ingredient costs and based on this broiler price, the optimum level of your energy, dietary energy, would be 3.08 megacalorie per kilogram. But you can see it's got so many decimals. I'm just going to go to format sales, number, general, and put it as three decimals. I don't want to have more than three decimals. Now, let's say the broiler price instead of $1.6 is going to increase to $2.1, right? So I'm going to solve the uh, diet for this situation. If I solve it, yeah, the solver found the solution, that's right. Now, with a new price, the uh, optimum dietary energy level would be 3.1. And for sure, your formula uh, has been changed from the previous scenario. Or let's say in other scenario, it was $1.6, right? In other scenario, let's say it's gonna uh, decrease, it's gonna be cheaper, and let's say it's going to be $1.2, right? In that case, what would be the uh, optimum energy and optimum solution for me? As you can see here, See, if the broiler price decreases, the uh, optimum energy level would be 3.03 uh, megacalorie per kilogram. But previously it was 3.1 megacalorie. Or it's the same idea, it's the same situation regarding the ingredient prices as well. I'm gonna change it back to $1.6, the broiler price. And let's say I'm going to change the corn price instead of um, $0.3. Let's say it's gonna increase to $0.38, right? I put it here. I'm going to increase, you can see. Okay, now if I solve uh, the Diet. Now, if I look at the um, energy, it is still is 3.041 because the sensitivity range for the corn price might be beyond the uh, increase that I made over the corn price. So. I'm gonna put it 3.1 um, uh, dietary energy as initiation uh, value, as a starting value, and change it to 0 0.4 to see what would happen. So it's working. Um, yeah, again, 
the energy optimum energy level is 3.04 megacalorie per kilogram. So I'm going to change it back. And now I am going to, is it soybean meal? So I'm going to increase soybean meal price. It is uh, 0 0.525. I'm gonna fire up the calculator. Let's say if it would increase by 30% plus 0 0.525, it would be like 0 0.68, 0 0.469 dollar. See, I increased the soybean meal price 30%. To see if it would affect my energy level and formula or not. I'm gonna change it to 3.1 megacalorie per kilogram as initiation uh, or starting point, and I'm gonna solve it. See, by increasing the soybean meal price, protein source price, the dietary energy went down. Previously, it was 3.04 megacalorie, now is around three megacalorie, or 3,000 kilocalorie per kilogram. So it is all I can say about the maximum profit feed formulation. And again, to make it nicer, you can create, uh, you can convert actually the inclusion rate from, verti from horizontal position to vertical position. See, I'm going to say, sorry, I'm going to say feed in gray ingredients and um, inclusion rate, right? So I'm going to say this one should be equal to this one. Corn, this one should be equal to wheat and wheat middlings equals to soybean oil um, equals to canola equals to soybean meal equals to fish meal equals to oyster equals to limestone equals to by calcium phosphate equals to lysine See, what I'm doing here is just bringing the feed ingredients names from top of the Excel to below just to make it nicer and manage it easily. It will be user friendly. Okay, I think I done all of them, right? So what would be inclusion rate? Inclusion rate is for corn this one, for other cells, again, soybean oil, canola, I think, for this one, and you know, I can just um, copy down all of these cells. I hope I'm going right and doing it without any mistakes. Okay, 
some right and for vitamin is this one for this one. okay now i can just format these as table or i can just put it a color for that and every time that i am changing i am changing the prices of product or ingredients and i'm receiving a new formula i can just look at the, my for my uh, final formula over here easily now i want to see how much energy how much nutrients my final formula have so if i look at the z column i can see here i have imported nutrient specifications right so my new uh, diet has 3.0031 or let's say 3 megacalorie per kilogram energy how much protein does it have 20.82 so it is really really important factor that you need to solidify in your mind look at the nutrient specifications that i have extracted from manual guide for example energy level was 3.1 megacalorie per kilogram or 3100 kilocalorie per kilogram and the protein level suggested protein level was 20.1 percent uh, right now in my diet when uh, the energy level has been changed i mean has been optimized to a new level the concentrations of other nutrients such as protein needs to be adjusted based on the new dietary energy level if you change dietary energy level for example the manual guide says 3.1 megacalorie per kilogram you are going to optimize it and i don't know for example say no in my diet based on the ingredient prices and uh, product it means chicken price the uh, optimum dietary energy level should be 2.9 uh, megacalorie per kilogram then should you use the protein of 21.5 percent suggested by the guideline no because you have changed the energy level you need to change it proportionally and it is the main point and it is really important from the nutritional uh, aspect and you need to pay close attention to this stuff if you done if you formulated the diet you need to double check nutrient specifications to see if it makes sense or not and also you need to double check the inclusion rate of your feedstuffs for example let's say fish meal is three percent does it make sense yes what about it it would be 10 percent maybe your excel or your feed formulation software has been formulated it uh, for example to have 10 percent fish meal in your diet and mathematically it is correct but from nutritional standpoint it's wrong because uh, we have limitations for feedstuffs usage and i think i talked about that in my previous videos a little bit or for example let's say lysine level look at the lysine level how much is the lysine level 
0.21%. It means this one, it means 2.1 kilogram per ton, right? It means that if I just multiply this by 10, it would give me, uh, because it is actually based on percent, I need to um, multiply it by thousand here. See, because this 0 0.21 is based on uh, percent, that's why. I'm, I need to uh, multiply it by 1,000 to uh, have it as kilogram per ton. If I put kg per ton, and if I just drag it down for all of my PD stuff, and also do the same here. Okay. And also, you know, I, I can just um, calculate the sum for this one is 100% and also for kilogram per ton. It is based on kilogram, right? It should be 1,000 kilogram or one ton. So now, and again, I can uh, change the decimal points to two. Okay, to have them being see being. Uh, seen nicely and precisely. I was talking about lysine, right? I said the inclusion rate is 0.21%. It means that 2.1 or 2.05 here, based a kilogram per ton. I need to look and see if it makes sense biologically nutritionally or not. In our diet, please pay close attention to this sentence. It's really important for a nutritionist to know this stuff. In commercial diets, our, the inclusion rate of synthetic amino acids should not exceed five kilogram per ton. 0.5%. It should not exceed this amount. So maybe you have balanced a diet that has, I don't know, seven kilograms per ton lysine. And mathematically, it's correct. But from the nutritional standpoint, it is wrong you need to consider the limitations. That's why I am uh, saying it over and over to be careful about this stuff and don't say, okay, I've got my formula, that's it. No, you need to have knowledge in animal nutrition. You need to consider your knowledge. You need to uh, apply your uh, nutritional knowledge in diet formulation. So it is the final spreadsheet for maximum profit with formulation. I hope you have learned uh, useful things from this presentation. And please let me know if you have any questions uh, down there in the comments, and I would be more than happy to answer your question. And also, if you have any suggestion for uh, further uh, videos, you need to just let me know, and I will try 
to uh, create new videos based on your demand. Have a good day. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. And I'll see you over in the next episode.